Time for the test team of the year. And time for all of you to send all your bobs at me, all your attacks at me, saying, how did you miss this? How didn't you pick that? This is the fun part of doing it, actually. And I, as I say every year, as I pick my test team of the year, all of you pick your test team of the year as well. But the key is of the year. It depends on performances in this year. So if Virat Kohli hasn't performed much or Steve Smith hasn't performed much, they cannot get into the side or Bumrah cannot get into the side because they haven't done enough in 2022. So this is based on performances in 2022, but teams didn't play that much test cricket. Other than England that played a lot of test match cricket, some of the teams played six, seven, eight test matches. So you'll find a few individual choices creeping in there as well. But that's part of the fun, isn't it? So let's start. Openers. Over the last two or three years that I've been doing this selection, picking openers in test match cricket has always been easy because they've been that few. It's a, it's a drought in performances that has extended for a very long time. And this year, there were only three from which you had to pick two. And one of them just picked himself straight away and that was Usman Khwaja. Came back as an opener and got runs in Australia. He got he had a standout series in Pakistan, which isn't always easy when, you're, when you've played all your life on certain kind of pitches. And he made a thousand test runs. Usman Khwaja just picked himself as the number one test match opener of 2022. Then the second opener. I had two to choose from. I loved watching Abdullah Shafiq. He's going to be a fine player. A lot of his runs came at home. A lot of those came on flat pitches, but he showed his class. None more so than in that test match in Gaul, where he was 160 not out in a chase of 344 and saw the team home. And that told you this kid is going to be special. But added against him is Craig Brathwaite. Year upon year upon year, Craig Brathwaite goes out and scores runs for the West Indies and he bats in one of the poorest batting teams in Test Match Cricket. And Brathwaite goes out and suddenly there's not that much left to West Indies batting. He's got to hold them up and to then average in the 60s, holding up a team like that, 64 and 110 at Perth, the standout performance for him. Uh, Abdullah, you'll make many teams, but this time I'm going with Craig Brathwaite to partner Usman Khwaja at the top. Now, 3-4-5, middle order. At number three is a person who had a year in two halves. The first half, he was captain, didn't win anything, but scored more runs than everybody else. Joe Root was batting on a different planet in the first half of the season, and then he just tailed off at the end, but he still scored a mountain of runs, still looked a wow player. I know he averaged 47. By the way, 47 is a pretty decent average, but he just looked a fantastic player. And you cannot have a World Eleven from 2022 without Joe Root, really. So, Joe Root is my number three. I know some, some of you might say he should bat at number four, but I think he's got everything in there to bat at number three. So, he's my number three. Number four was very easy. I didn't even need to look at the numbers. The numbers said that he scored a thousand runs, that he averaged in the mid-60s, but Babar Azam was imperious. He doesn't have a problem playing spin. He doesn't have a problem playing pace. He's holding up a weak test match batting side, much like Brathwaite is. And... He's, he's just a class player. I think we're starting to see the coming of one of the special talents in the game. So, Babar Azam is number four. Now, who do I have of number five? We haven't seen uh, Manas Labushain yet. We haven't seen Steve Smith yet. Yet, there was one other player who scored runs everywhere in the world. Not only that, when Brendan McCullum and Ben Stokes came together and said, we're going to play a certain way, it was just down his street. He won matches from very difficult situations for England and still managed a thousand runs with six centuries, Johnny Bairstow is my number five. Not to keep wickets, but just to bat because Johnny Bairstow just played like he was playing white ball cricket, except that he was playing test match cricket and pulling out impossible matches. And he had a season, he just had a season to remember. So Bairstow is five. And as I said, that means no room for Smith, no room for Labushain, but also no room for a couple of others who had wonderful seasons. Dinesh Chandimal. Just flew under the radar this year. And Daryl Mitchell went and scored 300 in that series against England. But there's only that many you can pick. Then you come to the all-rounders. I think I'm very happy with my top five. But I want my all-rounder to be a batting all-rounder who can bowl a little bit. Does that species exist? It's not a great time for all-rounders in international cricket at the moment. So just put your numbers aside and say, okay, which all-rounders come to mind? Without being disrespectful to many else, there was only one all-rounder who was playing test match cricket this year. There were others playing bits and pieces and parts, but there was only one all-rounder who was playing test match cricket. And he revolutionized 
test match cricket in the second half as captain Ben Stokes is always there. Whether you want him to bowl an 8-9 over spell, whether you want him to pull out matches that seem gone. So, Ben Stokes is my number six. Now that I have an all-rounder who can bowl, I've got a keeper at number seven. There's no way he should be batting at seven, but that's what happens in compilations like these. There were only two or three keepers to look at, but there's one name that stands head and shoulders about, above everybody else. He got two incredible hundreds in the year. He got a 90, he changed matches, and his wicket-keeping just went higher and higher and higher as the season went along. I know Tom Blundell did all right. Liton Das, off and on, had a good season, but didn't keep enough. But there was no competition for Rishabh Pant as the wicket-keeper batsman in Test Match Cricket this year. So I've got Pant to complete my top seven. So now I can look at my four bowlers in peace without one wondering whether they can bat or no. My top seven are good enough. I've got Ben Stokes to bowl seam up. I've got Joe Root to bowl a little bit of spin. So I'm looking at three seamers and a spinner. The first name I picked from the three, and this player is going to be an all-time great. He's already among the contemporary greats. He's going to be one of the greats that played the game. We're talking about Kakiso Rabada. Didn't quite have a great white ball season, but with, that, with the red ball in a side that wasn't giving him enough runs, leading probably the best seam attack in world cricket at the moment. There's Nokia, there's Ngidi, there's so many others, but Rabada stood tall and Kahiso Rabada was my first pick. For my second pick, I'd say I've gone back in history, but I'm going to Jimmy Anderson. In England, I think when Anderson is 70 years old, he'll still turn up with that wobble seam and bowl outswing and inswing and pick up wickets. But he went to Pakistan. And he picked up wickets there. There was a suggestion that Jimmy Anderson was now becoming a first innings bowler, not quite a second innings bowler. But he did most things that were asked of him. England looked after him well. And I think he did enough to be in the test team of 2022. So, Jimmy Anderson is my second. What about my spinner? Jack Leach enjoyed a second lease of life under Ben Stokes. And I think Stokes has brought out the best in Leach. If you looked at the first half of the season, you'd have thought maybe Leach is finished. And Stokes just pulled him out and said, no, Jack Leach, you play with me. And he had a wonderful year. There was young Jai Surya in Sri Lanka who had a great year, but I don't know what he's going to do next. And so I'm going back to the pedigree of someone who's moving towards 500 test wickets. And that is Nathan Lyon. He still had another good season. You expect Nathan Lyon to have a good season anyway. So Nathan Lyon is my spin bowler to bat at 10 just ahead of Jimmy Anderson, which leaves me with my third seamer. And so to the third Seba. How can you pick a team without Pat Cummins? I mean, one of the greats of our time. He's always there. Picked up five wickets towards the end of the year. But it wasn't a very Cummins kind of season. And so, I'm looking beyond Cummins. I'm looking at strike rates and averages. I looked at Broad. Another big revival. 40 wickets in there. But there was one young bowler who not only gives the left-handed version, started to swing the ball. With his height, he gets bounced. He just kept taking wickets every time you saw him on the park. He's, he'll add batting for me at number eight. That's not my primary concern, as I've said. But I just looked at him and said, wow, this kid is going places. And I've gone back to South Africa and I've gone with Marco Janssen as my number eight. Adding the left-handedness, as I said, the height, adding the bounce. And I think I've got 11 that I'd be very happy to take on the park. So, And so I've got a team I'm pretty happy with. Usman Khwaja is in great form. Khwaja and Brathwaite. Then I've got Root, Babar Azam and uh, Johnny Bairstow. It's a pretty good middle. Then the batting get ex gets extended with Ben Stokes and Rishabh Pant and Marco Janssen. Then Rabada. Oh, we've got a pretty good bowling lineup. Anderson is still there and, and Nathan Lyon. I'm very happy with the team I've picked.